Hi hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, where we are going to play a game of what the heck are those rifles? <laughs> today we have a pair of completely unidentified and virtually unmarked slide action rifles. And these are both well, they're clearly related. Um, these actually came out of the same collection, and while there are no markings to substantiate it, the designs are obviously, to my eye at least, similar. Um, as far as I see it, this has to be the early like tool shop uh, first version of the gun. And then this is the same action with a few tweaks and refined, and actually looking like a pretty nice piece, despite the fact that it doesn't work, which is a minor issue. At any rate, um, I have absolutely no idea what the history on these is. I can't even tell you what country they came from. The only markings on either of them are a bunch of serial number ones on parts on this nicely finished one. So what we're going to do today is just take a look at these things and kind of explore how they work, because it's a very unorthodox and pretty interesting design. All right, we're sort of going to do this backwards here. We're going to start with the nice complete gun, uh, because it's easier to understand how this works. Then we're going to go back and look at the prototype one, because once you see how this works, you'll have a better grasp of what they were trying to get to with the first one. So on this guy, first off, yes, this is as awkward to handle as it looks, because this is your grip, but you cannot wrap your thumb around anything. So you kind of have to just do this. This is, of course, you may have figured this out, your slide handle. So it comes back like that, and when it does, it's going to open and close the bolt up here. The bolt itself is a rotating locking bolt, so you can see as I, I'm sliding the, the handle back and forth, and as you move it backwards, what it does first is rotate the bolt to unlock, and then slides it rearward. So we have a pair of locking lugs up here. Uh, that are what actually engage and lock the thing. And then, once it goes all the way back, it's going to pop up an elevator. And this thing is actually split. So you're, you would have a cartridge uh, held inside this, and those, the, basically the, the lips of this thing wrapping around the top prevent that cartridge from going anywhere. And then, when the bolt comes forward, it is going to split that open, as you can see right down in the back end there. There's a, an extra kind of a follower piece that's going to split the elevator in half. At this point, the nose of the cartridge has gone up into the chamber, and the back is being pushed by the bolt. So as this chambers, the elevator drops back down to pick up the next cartridge. That is rather like um, a Henry pattern of elevator. So here's this again. You kind of have to slam this open up with a little bit of force, again, kind of like a Henry, uh, to get that thing to lift up. Um, also like any of the Kropaceks. Now, you might be wondering, where's the magazine? Because you didn't see a magazine in this earlier. Well, that is because the magazine is cleverly located underneath the slide handle. So that guy right there, our follower here, our floor plate's just held in by tension. That is the magazine and its follower spring. It's a, clearly a single stack magazine, and uh, located just behind the trigger. And note the, the arrangement here. The magazine's back here, and then the ejection port's up here. So there is a little pusher bar connected to the bolt that when the slide goes forward, it is going to push a cartridge from the magazine forward into this elevator. That will only happen when the elevator is in the downward position. So right there, the elevator's dropping. And down here, you can see that metal block right above my finger there. That is what is going to be pushing the top cartridge forward into the elevator. Uh, you can also notice right up in there, on the bottom of the bolt is a serial number one. So. That pushes the cartridge forward, which is going to line it up on the elevator down in there, ready to be lifted up the next time the bolt cycles. So right there, now your cartridge would be up, in position, and ready to chamber. This rifle actually feels like a pretty well put together 
piece of machinery. Uh, the bolt feels relatively solid. This doesn't feel like it's just going to rattle apart. Uh, unfortunately, there are some bits down here that don't work that I'm not entirely clear on the purpose of. For one thing, there is no trigger mechanism in this rifle. We have a latch here on the side of the pump, and some sort of little thing right here, sort of connected to the trigger. Don't know what this does. I suspect this latch is supposed to be a locking latch to hold the slide handle in place, so that you don't accidentally pull it out of battery when you're handling the gun and not intending to. However, it doesn't work uh, if that's what it's supposed to be doing. We have a nice serial number 1 stamped on the top of the receiver there. We have a reasonably effective uh, rear sight here. Certainly it's a, a well thought out rear sight with little number 1s on both of the legs. You have a regular notch here for aiming, and then you have a screw adjustable uh, long range notch. So you stand the sight up like so. Uh, there are no um, range markings on here. This is a little too early of a, of a prototype to have gotten that far. The barrel band is very nice. I wouldn't be surprised to find if, that these parts had actually been taken from another existing rifle, uh, rather than made from scratch. Same with the butt plate, but I can't quite identify them. I'm not sure what they are. Someone watching this, one of you guys may be able to identify exactly what these components are from. It's actually a bit uh, like Spanish Mauser looking at the end here. Uh, we have a nice blade front sight. Not sure what the, the recess is here at the muzzle. But we do have a cleaning rod and a nice front barrel band. Uh, this is 30 caliber. I have no idea what the chamber is. I don't have the uh, the opportunity to do a chamber cast here, but uh, it is a 30 caliber bore. There's the butt plate that I mentioned. Pretty sure this is salvaged from some other gun, because that's a pretty complicated part to have made from scratch for a one-off. But I don't know exactly what that came off of. There is an access hole in the back of the receiver. This is probably how you would take the thing apart, but this would require a lot of wood screws to take the to take this apart. So I am not going to. I'll leave that to the next owner. By the way, another serial number one. And here's the left side, which is basically identical to the right. This is a very slick-sided gun. Um, everything going on here is either top or bottom. Top eject, bottom feed, bottom action. Assuming this is the safety in some way, it's right down in there. So that is the final product here. Now let's take a look at the prototype. This is much cruder, but you can see that it's clearly still the same design. So we have the same top eject, the same basic receiver construction. Uh, the one big difference uh, functionally is that the magazine on this one is located in front of the trigger where the magazine on the earlier one is located behind the trigger. Now what's kind of cool is, I mean clearly this is not a great idea. Uh, this thing clearly didn't work very well. And the designer realized that they could move the magazine back and actually not change any of the rest of the layout. So this one has a system, which I'll be honest I haven't really quite figured out, uh, for pushing a cartridge backwards into that elevator and then lifting it. And when he moved the magazine he just changed it that mechanism to instead push a cartridge forward onto the lifter. Of course, in addition, uh, the slide on this one is captive in this sheet metal guard. So it comes back and forward. Once again, we have a button here, which I'm pretty sure is supposed to be a locking catch so that you can't open the slide unless you're depressing the button as an out of battery safety. It doesn't work on this one either. Uh, and as with the last one, there is no trigger mechanism in this rifle, so the trigger doesn't actually function. If we look at the bolt, you can see it does the same thing as the last one. Uh, the last one they added a little bit of a roller there, but on this guy, the first movement of the slide unlocks the bolt, and then the rest cycles it backwards. And there's our elevator. When we move the bolt forward again, it's going to split the elevator apart. Uh, at this point, the cartridge would be caught, presumably, uh, between the chamber at the front and the bolt at the back, which, by the way, looking at this suggests this is a pretty long cartridge. I would say I would put even money on this actually being chambered for 30-06. That seems 
that that would be my guess. I don't have I have basically no evidence to go on except for 30 caliber, because this one, by the way, is also 30 caliber. Uh, 30 caliber and the action length. I'll, I'll go with 30 out 6. The magazine on this one is a bit of a conundrum to me. We have a control out here, which slides something back and forth in there. And this is also the follower, because I can lift it up, and you can see the follower come up here. What I'm wondering is if this is for loading. When you load the gun, you push it all the way forward, and that moves it forward enough that you can slide cartridges like down and then in. Uh, and then when you're ready to fire, or ready to cycle the action, then you pull it back like this, where it will hold the cartridges in and prevent them from, uh, from falling out the bottom of this open magazine. Assuming that is the case, that still leaves the question of what's the system for pushing the cartridge out of the magazine and into the follower? And I know the light's a little dark and you can't see much in there, I apologize for that, but there really isn't any mechanism that I can see doing that. I can't find a pusher in there of any sort. What I can do, however, is take out these three screws, pull off the side plate, and show you the inside. Yeah, how about that? So this gives us a really good view of how this all works. We've got a linkage arm connecting the slide handle to the bolt up there. So that's, you can see the bolt rotating right there, and then rotating open and sliding back. There's a lug right up there at the front, and a matching lug there at the back that are going to catch this connecting arm, I believe, and uh, force the, the arm to pick up the bolt and start moving. Our elevator is right here, and you can see the cam track on the slide handle right down in here. It's kind of behind some things. That cam track is what's going to operate the elevator up and down. So right there, this is connected, is running in that track. That lifts it up, and it's going to come down. So it waits to raise until the very end of travel, and then there's a delay to it. So when you pull the bolt forward, it goes in the top section of that parallelogram, and that gives the that leaves the elevator up long enough to start the cartridge feeding, so the cartridge doesn't just fall out loose into the action. Now this is connected to this guy, which let's see that was moving earlier. There we go. Um, that doesn't appear to do anything. I suspect the cartridge pusher had something to do with this, and there is a part missing that would have actually done that. So. Can't, can't help you on that one, it's still kind of a mystery there. But we can certainly get a good feel for how the rest of this worked. And I think this prototype rifle really makes more sense uh, being seen after the finished product. Now I can take off the, the front end of the stock here, which by the way is the flimsiest stock I think I've ever seen in my life. We're going to be very careful with that. And for what it's worth, I can show you the front end of the the system, the magazine here, but there's not nearly as much interesting stuff to see. First off, it's not really actually connected to the barrel out here. Uh, we'll be generous and we'll call that free floating. Uh, but then here is our follower piece, or yeah, this is legitimately the follower right there. There's really nothing to see on this side because this is just really a lot of uh, sheet metal without a whole lot underneath it. You can see this mechanism connected to this, but again, I think there must be something missing here, because that rod is what you saw inside, and it does nothing. So uh, that's, uh, that's the best we can do there. Note that there are no markings on the barrel underneath this handguard, so I suspect this, this looks like it wasn't necessarily a barrel actually taken from an existing rifle, or if it was, they scrubbed all the markings off of it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully if you are a uh, home gunsmith or design enthusiast, maybe this will give you some ideas, or at least give you some interesting uh, thing to mull over in your head today. 
And uh, if you are a collector of weird oddball stuff like this, well, both of these are coming up for sale here at Rock Island. If you take a look at the description text below the video, you'll find a link to ForgottenWeapons.com, and from there you can link over to Rock Island's catalog pages on both of these rifles. Uh, they are selling as separate lots, so two separate catalog pages. And those will have their photos, their description, their price estimates, and all that sort of good stuff. Thanks for watching.